Welcome to the 126th episode of the Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. You know, sometimes paranormal. You know. <laughs> my, my name is Jason Knight, host of the show, and with me, as always, is... Oscar Spector, drinking. Producer extraordinaire and podcast co-host. Well, this episode is coming out just five days before Halloween, so we want to wish all our listeners a very happy, spooky, safe Halloween. Mm-hmm. Oscar, what do you say? Oh, I mean, I can't endorse that because I'm not going to have a, a safe Halloween, honestly. No, you are going to have a COVID party. Basically, basically, <laughs> or basically, if you prefer. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so as far as, you know, I'm just transitioning into what we've been doing here. Um, yeah, I'm having a party on Saturday, the day of Halloween, day of the dead or whatever. Or actually, day of the dead is whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm having one. It's at this place, and it is costumed. And I invited, I invited like 20-plus people. I know that they're not, not even half of them are coming. So I knew that going in. Yeah. So, but I did it just, you know, so I can guarantee a few people would come because, you know, uh, you know, some, you know, my friends in general and like myself, we don't always commit to things like that. And we often don't go to things. So we'll say yes at first, maybe, and then not do it. So yes, um, knowing you're going to change to no a week later. Right. I do I that know. shit all the time. Yep. So yeah, you're one of the friends, right? Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'll be there already thinking, okay, I'm going to have a headache that day for sure. Yeah, I'm from, from, <laughs> for sure. It's, there's a James Bond marathon on TNT. Um, That's right. <laughs> uh kids ask your parents what tnt is um and what james so, bond is <laughs> I mean, what you, unfortunately right yeah um so uh my brother and luke are definitely coming for example staple friends obviously my brother rough and uh i have maybe some co-workers come in and i used um the co-workers uh friendships with each other to guarantee that two or three will come oh smart so like, right so i invited uh one so i invited three total co-workers one that still works with me, meaning in my store, and then two others that left my store over the course of this year, earlier in the year. Like, I think one left in March and one left in January. And But we still kind of, like, they come by to the store, you know, after their other job, and we still converse, like, oh, how you been and stuff like that. We still, like, very you know, friendly. We're, we're friends. Yeah. And um, so I invited uh, the, the coworker that works with me, and I told them, like, we should invite this other one that, you know, uh, her name is Lyra. We just invite her. And then I used the context, the pretext of like inviting this other coworker that she was friends with that she hasn't seen since then um, to come over in order. <laughs> for, and then I told him like, well, she'll come. So you should come. <laughs> and even though they both never said yes or no, um, I just said that to convince them to come over. You're going to fill that place one way or the other. I'm filling it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking I was having like a bunch of uh, horror movies playing like back to back. Yeah. Am I? Right. And the, and it's not like to pay attention to just to have. And uh, I, this might be too late already because I didn't have time to order it in advance. But we're going to we have a we have a fondue machine and a chocolate fountain thing. Wow. Yeah. Alexi like got them for past Chris, uh, past birthdays or something like when she was younger. And so we got them here and I've never I have never played with one in my life. No. So. We were thinking of uh, getting some like white chocolate in one and regular milk chocolate maybe in the other and just go nuts. Hell yeah, um, man. Just get people in the diabetic coma. And uh, I'm <laughs> they're also... Not, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to catch COVID. They're going to catch a diabetic coma. Right. And I'm also uh, going to bake uh, limoncello cookies. I found this recipe. Love limoncello. Yeah, I'm going to make limoncello cookies. I'm going to try it. It looks possible. It looks like I, could, I like Oscar can do it, a guy who doesn't know anything about cooking. I think Oscar but, can do it. Yeah, so I've been, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a dry a practice run on Wednesday, and then I'm going to do the for real one on Saturday. Um, so that's the stuff that's to be expected. I'm going to tell them if they want their own kind of booze to bring it themselves, and if people want real food, they're going to have to like order something when we get here. 
because I'm not going to make food for them on top of everything else. <laughs> um, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, other than that, we have a, a second Shura glider. Her name is Zelda. She's, uh, I forget how old she is, but she is younger than our current uh, Lily. So stinking cute. Oh, so you, my you God. just saw them. That's right. You just saw them. If this was a video podcast, I would totally show everyone, but that's okay. Um, that's a little dig at you, Jay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's okay. No worries. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is so adorable. Um, we got her yesterday. She's been with us 24 hours and she, she's acclimating pretty well, pretty goddamn fast. She's already like licking and biting me, which are, which are positive signs. They're not <laughs> Those are good signs. Okay. Signs. Right. When they make that crabbing noise, it's not, that's when they're like either annoyed at you or, or, or afraid of you. That's, oh. not, that's not the good sign. Um, there was something else I was going to mention, but you know, I, I, I'm starting, I'm starting to forget. Um, otherwise, you know, I've been watching, uh, horror movies. It is the season. Absolutely. Uh, nothing good though. You know, there, I've been there, to, there really isn't anything good. You know, no, no. no. There, over the course of the year, there's one or two like good ones, not great ones, mind you. No, 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 the witch, no, it follows nothing like that, but it's uh, still good ones. But not like, not in this month, you know? And no. I, I've, I've been hearing like, you know, things here and there about this movie or that movie. And I would watch it or start watching it and like be completely disappointed to the point where like I'm not even finishing some of them because I'm like, oh, I don't want to watch it. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know if this is me being curmudgeon, old timer, getting old kind of thing. And I'm just stopping the movie halfway through. But I was just like completely uninterested. So I went back to finishing another episode of a show I was watching already or something. So I found myself doing that a lot this week where I started movies and never really finished them because they were just were not grabbing me at all. Yeah. And that sucks because I really want to watch um, some good horror. And other than the ones that I've seen before. And, well, that, uh, that's the thing. That's, the, that's yeah. all there really is, is stuff that's a couple years old already. Well, that's the thing. Is There's that, nothing uh, new that's good. Well, that's the thing is that there always is. I just have to find it. Because before it follows, before The Witch, before The Shining, before all these movies, people hereditary. were saying the same thing. Hereditary, uh, for me, Midsummer too. Uh, oh, yeah, Midsummer. Before all these movies, people were always complaining about this stuff. But those movies came out. And when they came out, we were enjoying them. We were just not complaining about it because we were having <laughs> an awesome time. Right. So, like, they're always, always something. We just got to wait for the next one. I'm just waiting for the next one. Um, so, yeah. You know, it's been... Like and that kind of thing. Last night we tried. We we saw uh, on Amazon a movie called Houses that October built. And I'm like, Yikes. "Oh, that's a that's a that's clever a name. Let me let me I don't know, that's a wordy fucking. <laughs> let me click on this, you know, synopsis. Like a haiku for a title. <laughs> <laughs> so we read the synopsis and it's like five friends jump into an RV and travel across the country in search of the ultimate haunted house, the most extreme experience, and they find it. I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Huh. Garbage. 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 Bad. <laughs> just garbage. Yeah. So I'm just excited for Mandalorian coming out on the 30th. Yes. That is Disney. coming out very soon. Disney yes. Plus, baby. Yeah. Yeah, that is coming. That's not, a, that's not a horror show, though, I would say. No, no, no. Not at all. But if Creepshow Season 2 would come out, I'd be all over that one. I guess. That was really good. The remakes of Creepshow. Very good. Yeah. That was fun. It was like X-Files, but for horror, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, I would say that this is one movie. I have my hopes on one movie, Jay. What is it? Came it? Out th- it came out this year, I think. It's on Shudder. Um, I haven't seen it yet, granted, but I heard good things. It's called Scare Me. Oh, like, I haven't heard of it. Like, you know, to scare me. Yeah. And it's about these people in some cabin somewhere, like in a horror setting, maybe. I don't know. I don't know enough. I guess I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the trailer either. I just heard people talk about it. Um, and uh, apparently the description goes as follows, like, there's these four or three or four people in this cabin and the whole time they're telling each other horror stories like you do. And um, yeah. the whole point is that they're trying to freak each other out, kind of like a, like a scare off contest, but not like for real. And apparently it has a really good ending and it has a really good storytelling and stories within it. Oh. And that's it. It's all that. It's all these people just telling stories. It's out, stories. it's out now? Yeah, it's out now. I'm going to have to it's, check it out. It's just people talking about spooky stories, just showing, just telling them, you know, just oratory storytelling, you know what I mean? And Great. it's, uh, it sounds, it sounds cool and sounds like it was done right. So I'll check it out. I'm going to well, check it I'm out. I'm adding that to my list. My hopes are on that one. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. I was kind of busting your chops about having the COVID party, right? For Halloween. Right. Yeah. 
My and traps I, were busted. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. and, and, and I went ahead. I should talk. I went ahead and did something a little crazy this week. You did. Yeah, I think you know, this is what happens to the good people, the good, the good boys and girls who like stay good for too long. They bust out this way. I haven't. We so it was my wife's fortieth birthday this week. It's a real big deal, right? Happy and I felt really horrible because there was nothing to do. No one was getting together. You know, going out to to restaurants that was kind of out of the picture. You know, there, it was just kind of a real blah birthday. Mm-hmm. So. I'm like, you want know to fuck this? We've been locked in since March. I haven't had a haircut since the beginning of March, right? That's how I haven't, strict, I haven't noticed. Yeah, that's how strict Sorry. we've been taking this, right? Yeah. So I said, you know what? Forget it. We're going to New Orleans. So I booked <laughs> us a trip to New Orleans. Wait, New Orleans, is this like a neighborhood in your area? Or? No, the New Orleans. Is the, oh. The New Orleans. We're going. In, in a different state? Different state. Yes. Huh. I know. I know. I know. I'm nervous. I'm scared. I'm one of those that play into the media hype where this thing is out there and it's going to get me, but hmm. we're, we're going to be careful. Lurking in the shadows. Yeah. I had to do something special. So we're going November 13th through the 18th. We're going to have a good goddamn time. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you better, right. If you're going to yeah. do all that, you got to do it. You got to take the most out of that. Do you have any, like, um, not to, uh, not to say give us details, but do you have any, uh, pre-planned activities nothing 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 is pre-planned this time uh we do have connections out there my my wife is friends with a a guy who owns a couple bars down there i have clients that live out just just outside new orleans so we've both been keeping tabs and they are doing really well down there i don't know what that mayor did but they're pretty much fully open there's not a lot of tourists so i think we're going to be fine and you know plus we're adults we know how to keep safe we know how to stay distant. We're not crowded bar people anyway anymore, so that we're not going to miss anything there. Mm-hmm. So I think we could do this, and I think we could be safe and come home and, and be okay. So we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> that sounds one. I mean, I'm all for it. I mean, you know me. I'm pretty, pretty, compared to you, I'm careless about it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm all for that. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. we're looking forward to that. It's coming up quick, which is great. Um, other than that, I, I don't really have anything else. N- not nothing, nothing else. No? Nothing crazy. I didn't break any skateboards this week with my fat ass. Although I did buy us new skateboards, so my daughter's right. been out there shredding it up on her brand new real skateboard. We bought some Beer City boards. Beer City's a skateboard manufacturer up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and they're also a punk label, a punk music label. So it was. I, I took her into a real skate shop, and we got to pick out. The decks, the wheels, the bearings, the trucks, right? All that. And uh, wow. so you know, this is what we used to do when we were kids. So to bring my daughter to do that was really special. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> this, the guy working there, he looked at me. He's like, yeah, we're going to have to put different bushings in your trucks. So he got me like this, these heavy-duty bushings to go into my trucks. I'm like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I know I'm old and fat, okay? You don't have to say it in front of the store. But no, it was great. It was it was really cool. Yeah, can I get the fat fat yeah. screws? <laughs> the fat screws. <laughs> I don't know what bushings are. I just went with it. I don't know anything about skateboards. But yeah, there there's there are these um bushings. There's these there's these plastic pieces in made into the trucks. And uh Got he it. wanted to upgrade those for me. <laughs> so Can I get the steel? No, no. I team is the Titanium is not hard enough. Get adamantium in here. <laughs> They're like, right. sir, would you prefer this sit-down scooter instead? Remember Kevin Smith on the airplane? This is the problem. <laughs> like that. Oh, they start, they start really making it worse on you. Getting old um, sucks, I'll tell you. There, there is actually another little piece of news. I don't know if I mentioned this on the show or even to you personally, like off <gasps> air, but uh, this is something so minor, by the way. I'm just going to mention it. Um, is that um, I think by the time the next show, I mean, don't call me on this, I think it comes out by then. The new PS5 comes out roughly around the time on the next show, around two weeks from now. Okay. Maybe three weeks from now. And I, I, got, I got my hands on the, one of the pre-orders on that one. Ooh. Yeah. Those are like five or 600 bucks, aren't they? They're like 550 something. Yeah, because yeah. Talia wants one. So you better start doing your chores, little lady. <laughs> And stop spending your money on bullshit because daddy ain't buying you that one. Right. No, right. I mean, But you're right. That's right around the corner. It is. right. I know in November. I just don't know when in November. And uh, I, I should say I didn't personally go out and get it. I didn't care 
to get one, which makes everyone so mad when I tell them because mm-hmm. I know so many people around me try their damnness to get one. But uh, my friend, a uh, friend of the show, Luke, uh, managed to get three pre-orders wow. for PS5s all by his all by his onesie, and then about two or three of the Xbox new one, and he got all this stuff, huh. and he sold them at price to his friends, and I got one of them. Oh, very cool! Very cool! Very didn't cool. you remember when we Nintendo Wii first came out? Yeah, I do. Didn't you go and stand in line for me and Katie? Katie yes, and I. I did. That was that was you, right? Yeah, that was me. Where you actually went out, you stood in the cold. Yeah, you I mean, held. It wasn't that cold. I'm sure it was. But you went and fought all these people. Luke, so Rob, and I managed to get our hands on like, I mean, I don't remember like four or five Wii's. Yeah, one for our place, like for our families, and then for you, one of them. Like we managed to get a lot of Wii's when people couldn't even get one. We were able to get at least four. Yeah, that I remember that. It was insane. We were driving. We were like madmen. We were on a mission from God. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it was insane. I remember you took me to my first uh, Brazilian steakhouse because of that. <gasps> that's right. That's why That's why oh you took God, me there. That's like, right. Because I got the Wii. That's right. Oh, those mm-hmm. were the days. Well. Yeah. I don't know. Should we roll into the contact info? Yeah. Let's do it. The easiest way to contact the Supernatural Occurrence Studies podcast is by visiting our website, chicagoghostpodcast.com. From chicagoghostpodcast.com, you can get to all of our social platforms, including Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Oscar, Patreon. For just $5 a month, you support us on Patreon, you get access to a whole library of Patreon-only podcast episodes. Those are episodes that will never appear in our public podcast feed. That's just the thing we do for our lovely patrons. So go to www.patreon.com forward slash Supernatural Occurrence Studies Podcast. Pledge your support for the show. I said that right, didn't I? It sounded right. Remember, $5 a month, that's only $60 a year. That's right. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead. Support your favorite podcast. We need Not to, to mention if you want to support us for free, if that is too much of a hardship. This is COVID times we're living in after all. Absolutely. Uh, it's like that movie, it's, uh, Time in the Life of the Cholera or something, but for COVID now. Um, yeah, but if that's too much, you can always for free, and it will help us a lot, is to go to your iTunes and give us a rating. It's the best way that algorithms can find us for other people to discover us. Maybe some of them richer than you so they can afford the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful. I'm kidding. Uh, but you know what I mean? That's how people can find us and grow this community. And I know that you, you out there, you know who I'm talking about, you. You listening to us right now. I know that you like to be like in the, in the know. I know this weird little website, this weird little podcast that no one else knows. Yeah. But it would really serve the longevity of our show, the lifespan of the show would definitely increase if more people hear us. So if more popular we become, the less cool, the more cool you'll be for knowing us from the beginning. But uh, don't worry about it. You don't have to, we don't have to be obscure. We can be popular too. There you go. Well said. Yeah, our our iTunes comments have been kind of quiet over the last couple months. So Oscar's absolutely right. If you don't want to join our Patreon, which is perfectly fine, leave us some some love on iTunes because that, that really does help independent posca- podcasters like ourselves. So jump over to iTunes. You can pause the episode on your phone right now. Leave us a review. Come right back to where you left off, right? Yeah, it takes five seconds. The other way you can contact the show is by calling our phone number, Chicago area code 872-529-0767. That's 872-529-0767. Give us a call, leave us a message, leave us a text. We'll read them and play them on the show. It connects to that one payphone you see on L.A. Law, <laughs> that one payphone. L.A. Law? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that still on? Or NYPD Blue or any of these yes. uh, law and orders. There's always that one payphone that the bad guy uses. That's the one payphone that goes to. <laughs> like one payphone per city nowadays, right? Something like that. Something ridiculous. <laughs> or, or one of those landlines that are hooked to the telephone poles. You've seen those? Oh, Please? like when the guys climb up and they put their, the, their yeah, own I'm sure they don't phone exist. into they there? They probably don't exist anymore. Do they? Yeah, I don't know. But, but you're right. That's where it goes. That's where it goes. You're calling back to a 90s serial television show 
Yeah, and showing our age at the same time. Yush. Should we take a break? Oh, yeah. Is this the time for that? Yes, let's do it. Listeners, welcome back to the show. Well, the lights are turned down low. The ceremonial candle is lit. And Oscar's white Russian is flowing. Let's start this show. So, I want to start out by saying I almost got to go to this place. If you remember, Oscar, when we were planning our last podcast road trip with Joe Erie and Dave Black, I put... California on the table. I wanted to go to the Charlie right. Manson sites. Right. I wanted to go to Celio Drive. I wanted to visit the uh, the hotel. Oh my God, we just covered it on Patreon. Why am I forgetting? Cecil. Thank you. I wanted to go to the Cecil Hotel and I wanted to go to the Winchester Mystery House. I've always wanted to go to this place. This place has captured my imagination for 20 years, right? Since I first heard about it. But of course, I was shut down and we went and did the Ohio a podcast trip instead out to the Ohio islands and snake mound and things like this. Remember? Yes. I almost got to go. I'm going to make it to this place one day because I'll tell you, I thought I had this place nailed down. I thought I knew the stories. I thought I knew what it was all about, which is why I've never really covered it up to this point. Cause I'm like, Oh, everyone, everyone knows what the Winchester house is, but I was wrong. There's a lot more to the person behind building the Winchester mystery house and the house itself. Stuff I never even knew. Are you, are you with me? Yes. I'm waiting in this division. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something. <laughs> no. I was waiting for the oohs or ahs or what? I'm not going to fake that. It comes out naturally. But yeah, I would, yeah I'm would. yeah, i totally interested in this because uh, – not because of that Hollywood movie, which came out like a few years ago. I didn't see it. Did you see it? 2018. I write that into the end of the script, but let's talk about it now. It sucked. Oh. Yeah, it looks sucky. <laughs> It's garbage. It looked it looked bad, even though I like uh, the actors involved. Uh, Helen Marin. Helen Marin, right? You know, usually solid. Uh, obviously, not always. And that other dude with the face, I forgot his name. Jay, isn't it Jason something? Jason Isaac? No, I'm thinking of something else. I forgot the other actor. That's how bad it was. I for, I completely forgot the other people that were in it. Yeah, he was in the Pet Cemetery remake, I think. Uh, hmm. Anyway. Um, it, it looked, uh, it, it just looked bad from the trailer I saw and I was like, man, I really want to see a good movie of this. But, uh, but you know, I almost saw it because I, I thought, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is correct. I thought that maybe they shot it there. But, uh, I think, I think some, there were some interior, actual hmm. interior shots. Cause I know Helen Mirren spent time in the Winchester mystery house. Oh, wow. That's cool. um, but the whole movie itself, no, was not filmed there completely. Got it. Okay. A lot of outside establishing shots for sure. It's really hard to fake, you know, the, the monstrosity that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's really unique. Yeah. You can't build really that on sound stage, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can, I'm pretty sure, but really hard. My, my, just go to the source, right? It's right there. Right. 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 And it's in California too, where like movies are human made. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not made. In, I mean, yeah, they are. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. They're usually, location scout away from California, but sounds sound studios. But yeah, I was curious about that, and then I was also curious about like uh, when you mentioned this topic. I'm like, are there other uh, movies or documentaries on this subject? I'm sure there's gotta be, but I didn't look it up because there's, I want. I like being unsullied. So. There's, there's a. Oh yeah, no, I, I get that. That's cool. Kind of experience as it unfolds. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a lot of stuff on YouTube about the Winchester house. I know the history channel has done it once or twice. Mm -hmm. Um, Of course, you know, independent paranormal investigators uh, shoot their stuff at Winchester house and put Mm -hmm. it up on YouTube. Um, When I was researching this episode, I did come across something on YouTube. It was a television show. It was only maybe 20 minutes long. And it must have been shot in like the 50s, hmm. you know, and it was just, you know, the, the 50s, the 50s voice telling the story over this grainy black and white film. 
uh, detailing the life of Sarah Winchester. And we're going to get into all this, of course, but, and showing the outside shots of the house. And it, it was just really cool that, that, you know, every, every 1950s film always had like that one hair in the goddamn film as you're watching it. You know what I'm talking about? There's always like a yeah. hair in there. So it, it just like this kind of brings you into that, that setting, you know, it was kind of neat, but yeah, there's definitely stuff out there. The only, that's the only movie though that I'm aware of was that 2018 horror. Uh, called aptly Winchester, and, and they fucked it up apparently. So yeah, it sucks. Um, and maybe we have listeners who are like, "No, it was awesome." Please let us know. Argue with us. Contact at chicagoghostpodcast dot com. Mm-hmm. But for we do, people, we do like to fight. Yeah. We do. We, we're scrappy. Yeah. But for those who don't know, the Winchester Mystery House is this gorgeous, enigmatic, supposedly haunted Queen Anne Victorian style mansion built by Sarah Lockwood Pardee Winchester between the years 1886 and 1922. And it's located at 525 South Winchester Boulevard in San Jose, California. Now notice how I said the mansion was built between 1886 and 1922. That means this house was under construction for almost 37 years stopping only when Sarah Winchester died in the mansion at the age of 82 from heart failure on September 5th, 1922. Now, can you imagine your house being under construction for 37 years? I'd imagine that she would have to like have built like something cottage size before that. So you can live in it while the rest of the house is being built around her. Right. So I'll I'll get into this. Yeah, oh, we know um, this stuff too. Uh, yeah, yeah we, we, we do. We do. Yeah, got it. But just imagine your house being under construction for 37 years. Over my furlough, over the summer, I redid my, my daughter's bedroom. Yeah. Over the course of three days, and I wanted to shoot myself. 37 years? I mean, I'm not even 37 years old. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. So that just gives you an idea of the obsession, the passion yes. this project was for. Can you, so it kind of makes Sarah. you wonder, right? Instant, when you hear a stat like that, like, the construction stopped because she died. Uh, I wonder if she, you know, made it longer, like lived longer to see it finished as she wants it, wanted it. Sorry. Uh, I wonder how it would look like, right? Oh, it would probably be all of San Jose. Oh, do you think, I mean, I, I guess you have the information, but uh, I wonder if it's, uh, if, if what wasn't finished was actual size rather than intricacy or details or like maybe another floor, but not necessarily another acre full of building. Uh, I mean, I wasn't thinking like longer or more or bigger. I was just thinking like how, what, what was, what, what, what was missing when she died? Like what was, Oh, missed? I see. I see your question. You know what I'm saying? Like, was it just oh, the faucets weren't installed? You know, or, <laughs> right? and, oh, there were probably fla- faucets of plenty in this place. <laughs> I would, I would argue, yeah, I would imagine so. No one, and that's that's the whole enigma about this place is no one is one hundred percent sure. I, I propose three theories in this episode of why the mansion turned out the way it did. The the, the, right. pro- the thought process behind it, but no one is one hundred percent sure what the heck Sarah Winchester was thinking when she put this monstrosity together. No one's really sure. I got some good ideas and you guys can make up your mind at the end, but no one really knows. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cool. Now the Winchester mystery house originally called Yanada Villa when Sarah Winchester lived there measures a staggering 24,000 square feet. It has 10,000 windows, 2000 doors, 160 rooms, 52 skylights, 47 stairways, 47 fireplaces, 17 chimneys, 13 bathrooms, six kitchens, two basements, and three elevators. And two maids of milking and five golden rings and a park and a Pretty pretty much, right? Yeah. It's just amazing. And believe it or not, this house, this mansion was once much larger. At one point, standing seven stories high. Whoa. Yeah, but three upper floors were severely damaged in an earthquake and never rebuilt. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Mm-hmm. This thing was even bigger at one point. I, you know, 
Okay, yeah, I know. Go ahead. You're going to get the whole thing, but you start thinking like, is she building a hotel? (laughs) Well. Like the grand, like the great northern hotel version for San Jose or something? Some some people might say that's an apt description of what she was doing, but a hotel for what is the question? Mm. Right. For maybe like a rich clientele, a certain type for meetings, for like cabal. We will uh, we will uh, see. You know what do you call what's that? Uh, you know, um, skull and bones crowd, <laughs> uh, right? The kind of thing, or or seances, right? Mystical mysticism going on in the house. No, or, you might be getting or the a little best closer. Game, the best game of hide and seek on the in the world. People, so that that's really it's not a joke. People, they do get lost in this house. How do you not? I'm get, I get there lost are, thinking about it. So I just rattled off some stats of things that are contained within this house, the doors, yeah. the number of doors, windows, th- things like this. Supposedly, there are miles of hallways and corridors built into this house. Fuck miles. You. Fuck you. No way. Yeah, dude. It's possible? nuts. This is nuts. Fucking the Underground Railroad is miles, sure, <laughs> but it's not that. This is a mansion, not a... It's, yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Now, and that's the thing, the the massive square footage and the obscene numbers of doors and windows and rooms isn't the strangest thing about the Winchester Mansion. The truly strange thing is that the mansion was built to resemble a massive carnival funhouse, which, legend says, Walt Disney himself used as the inspiration for Disneyland's Haunted Mansion ride. Oh, why are you kidding? Yeah. The Winchester Mansion features stairways that lead to nowhere, doors that open to literally nothing, or they open to solid walls. There are trap doors, secret passageways, and countless corridors and hallways, some of which are zigzagging and rather disorientating. And some of these hallways lead to complete dead ends. There are rooms within rooms. There's a skylight built into the floor, spiderweb windows, Bathrooms with glass doors, pillars upside down that don't quite reach the ceiling, roofing shingles inside the mansion, and huge doors that lead to incredibly small rooms, and cupboards and small doors that lead to huge rooms. Then there's the number 13, instances of which can be found all throughout the mansion. For example, the Winchester house has many 13-pane windows and 13 paneled ceilings, as well as 13 step stairways, 13 rails and railings, and 13 lights and chandeliers. The mansion's 13th bathroom has 13 windows of its own. The Winchester Mystery House is truly an assault on the senses and on three-dimensional perspective. Think of Lewis Carroll's books, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass, and that will hopefully give you an idea about how this mansion was built. And no master building plans have ever been found. The mansion's entire design came straight from the mind of Sarah Winchester, with a little bit of of help from ghosts, apparently. And it's believed that Sarah is truly the only one who knew all of the secrets hidden in the Winchester mansion. Now, Overall, it's believed that Sarah Winchester spent $5.5 million building the mansion over the 37 years. That's just about $81.7 million in today's money. Just a massive financial undertaking. So the better- is, Massive is putting it lightly, though. Yeah, well, you're it right. It feels like you're right. You, you think of the second place, and it's a castle. Like yeah. You think, right, like it, it's a castle. Like the reason why uh, uh, houses were so big in in uh, um, um, you know centuries of old, right? Like older centuries, even even uh, two centuries ago or one and a half, is because they didn't have plumbing, so they have to accommodate all these rooms and have all these extra space in order to do the same things that our little apartments can do, right? Because of technology and plumbing sure. and all these things, a lot of the reasons why, like the reasons why there's a laundry room the size of my apartment is because they needed all that to run the water and run the things and, and all this space makes sense. Um, this doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> you're right. It doesn't. You're, you're absolutely right. So makes no sense. And you know, she also did a lot of, and I'm kind of getting, I'm, I'm putting in some extra stuff here, but um, I'm sorry. no, she, she, she did a lot of firsts with 
the Winchester Mansion. For example, she was the first one to use wool as insulation in the walls. She really? she had um, a lighting system inside her house that was actually mm-hmm. operated by switches. They were they were gas, but they were operated by these sort of huh. electromagnetic switches that would strike together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I know at, what you mean. At the lamp and automatically light the gas in the lamp for her. I saw that in a movie once. Yes. It looked so cool. She yeah. had her own um, water filtration system. She had her own drainage system. She was one of the first people to have indoor uh, plumbing and indoor shower, believe wow. it or not. Wow. So there's a lot of firsts that she also did with this Winchester mansion. Very, very cool. And, and you know, I do want to say here, I should have said this at the top of the show, but look, listeners, this is an audio medium. The things we're describing, uh, go to the show notes so you can see what we're talking about. Because I put a lot of pictures of some of the things we're going to be talking about tonight in the show notes. So you can kind of follow along and see what I'm describing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I had it on me now. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'll share the show notes. I don't have the show notes (laughs) set up yet. (laughs) Now, to, to better understand the Winchester Mystery House, we have to understand Sarah Winchester. So, Sarah Winchester was born Sarah Lockwood Pardee in New Haven, Connecticut in 1839. In September of 1862, so right during the middle of the American Civil War, at the age of 23, Sarah Pardee married William Winchester, son of Oliver Winchester, the founder and president of Winchester Repeating Arms Company, the rifle company. Mm -hmm. William Winchester was Oliver's only son which made William heir to a vast fortune from the rifle company. Sarah and William had just one child, a daughter named Annie, who unfortunately died in July 1866 at just six weeks old from a disease called marasmus, a severe form of malnutrition. In December of 1880, Oliver Winchester died, leaving the Winchester fortune to his son, William, who was already in bad shape himself. And in March of 1881, just three months later, William Winchester died from tuberculosis at age 43. Now, obviously, Sarah was just broken by the deaths of not only her baby daughter, Annie, which some people say she never fully recovered from, but by the Winchester family patriarch's death, and especially her husband, William's untimely death. Silver lining, though, William's death resulted in Sarah inheriting a large part of the Winchester fortune. Reportedly, 50% of Winchester Repeating Arms Company stock, which paid her $1,000 a month till she died, and according to most reports, $20 million in 1881 money, or about $514 million in today's money. Sarah must have felt like she had just inherited all the money in the world. But does money quash sadness? Now, uh, go ahead. Oh, no, this is, uh, first of all, I was going to make a prenup joke, but, you know, that's pretty much said already uh, <laughs> just by mentioning it. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, but the other thing, it reminds me of uh, that, that thing you said about, you know, can she, what did you say, buy happiness? or So could uh, money quash sadness? Qu- quash sadness, right. It reminds me of this, one of my favorite lines and in, in the way the character puts it in all movie history is from a movie called psycho the alfred hitchcock movie um yeah in, in it there's this it's about it's about a lot of things but it's really it's, it starts off as about this girl who who steals a, a good chunk of money from her employer yeah, and was it an insurance company or something like that something like I remember, that i don't, right? I don't yeah. remember exactly but she meets the the kind of an asshole rich guy right the, who gives her the money to go to the bank but she instead takes it and the way he puts it his richness is that it doesn't buy happiness. It buys off unhappiness. It buys like, off unhappiness. Yeah. It like it reduce it. It you know, oh. it, it manages to take out unhappiness, but it doesn't add happiness to it. And that's how you saw richness and money. And I, I, like, I like that. And I like how uh, this reminded me of that. That's oh, what I want thanks. to say. Yeah. So as the popular story goes, Shortly after her husband's death, Sarah did what any grieving mother and widow would do in the late 19th century. She visited a spiritualist, a medium, in hopes of communicating with her deceased husband. You see, spiritualism was all the rage at the time, practiced in large part by widows who lost sons, husbands, brothers, and loved ones 
in the Civil War. According to legend, Sarah's spiritualist, a famous medium from Boston named Adam Coons, told her that she was being pursued, haunted by ghosts from people killed by the Winchester rifle because she, Sarah, was living off the money from the Winchester Repeating Arms Company. I think uh, that medium had his own political angle in there, <laughs> right? Wanted, it sounds like uh wanted her out of like, New Haven. Right. Yeah. So in other words, according to the medium, Sarah was living off blood money. Mm -hmm. After all, the most popular Winchester rifle at the time, the Winchester Rifle Model 1873, the rifle nicknamed the gun that won the West, and the rifle preferred by notorious outlaws like Butch Cassidy and Billy the Kid, had already sold over half a million units by the late 1800s. And that's just one Winchester rifle model. There was a total of seven Winchester rifle models sold during Sarah's lifetime. That's mm. a ton of guns, a ton of death, which apparently resulted in a ton of ghosts. And the NRA. Yeah. <laughs> a good portion of which were coming after Sarah Winchester, according to medium Adam Coons, anyway. That's, uh, that's kind of short-sighted, isn't it? I mean, uh, what is it? The uh, Guns doesn't make the violence that people do, right? Well, I, I think back then, guns were just a tool. They were a useful tool. I mean, they're still to they, today. We just don't, we don't see them that way. But Well, that's the thing, right? People look at it completely different today, I think. Yeah, Back yeah. then, it was a necessity. It was a tool. It helped you survive and live. That's what I'm saying. Now hunt. it's – You have to hunt, hunt for your right? food way more often than nowadays. Yeah. Now I just go to Jules. Yeah. Give me a steak. The gazelle is staring right there. They're chained up. I just got to shoot it with my – you know, it's easy <laughs> right. to shoot. Yeah. Now, Coons, the spiritualist, instructions to Sarah were to pick up and leave Connecticut where she and her deceased husband, William, lived and moved to California and build. The medium instructed Sarah to build a home that would not only entice the ghosts following her, but more importantly, trap them. Coons also said that as long as Sarah built, she would be safe from the vengeful ghosts. And if she should stop building, the ghosts would get her and she would die. Now, just so you know, in another version of the story, Sarah actually made contact with her husband, William, and it was William that gave Sarah these macabre instructions from beyond, from beyond the grave. But either way, building is exactly what Sarah Winchester would do. Now, a few years later in 1885, Sarah Winchester took her fortune and moved to California, California presumably at the spiritualist's request or at her deceased husband's request, depending on which version of the story you read. She first made a quick stop in San Francisco, but ultimately settled in San Jose, California in 1886. Now there, she purchased a two-story, fairly modest farmhouse on 40 acres of land. Sarah began adding onto the farmhouse to accommodate her two sisters, Mary and Isabel. Now, I couldn't find any information whether or not her sisters ever actually moved in, I know one of Sarah's nieces moved in uh, to this building, uh, this, this monstrosity taking shape for about 15 years. But regardless, the official story states that Sarah began building onto the original farmhouse to accommodate family. The building just never stopped. For 37 years, construction ran almost nonstop, day and night, with only a short month or two break here and there. And over Probably time, for the winter, right? Could be. Well, it's a San Jose, so pretty, pretty okay. mild winters, but yeah. maybe she didn't have ideas at the time. I don't know. Hmm. Now, over time, the strangeness took shape. Going back to the legend of Sarah Winchester, it said that she built her home in such a strange manner in order to confuse and trap the ghosts so that Sarah could then retreat to a whole nother part of the mansion and get some peace and rest away from the spirits. That's how haunted she supposedly was, right? That's the idea? That's the idea. She, right. According to legend, she would actually never sleep in the same room two nights in a row. She would always cycle through rooms within the house. And there were so many damn rooms in the house, she could do it. And then Maybe. she'd start the cycle over again. This way, right. the spirits would never know where she was, you know? N n neither did H.H. H. Holmes, you know, because... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this does have a... A little H.H. Holmesy, take it's out the murder, of course, but it's different things. Like one is creating ghosts and one is like baiting them away. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. Now, building only stopped with Sarah's death in 1922. Mm -hmm. And it said that when the news of Sarah's death 
hit the construction workers, construction stopped so abruptly that workers literally left nails. They were hammering halfway driven into the walls. That's how quickly they got the hell out of Dodge. Do you know why? I think they were just sick of it. They were just sick of it. Now, by mm. all re- all reports because, say okay. that – no, no, no. I'm just no. saying it. All reports say she treated her workers incredibly well. Actually, some workers were, at, were left part of her estate. She treated them very well, so they dealt with it. Uh, but I think when they finally knew it was over, they wanted, they wanted to be done with the nonsense. Oh, see, okay. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, – or I was going to say something about that because um, if – if reputation of this house they're building is become is is like saying that it's haunted, you know they their superstitions might, you know, scream at them to leave, right? But having lucrative work for that long, you can't yeah. pass that up, right? During those times too. I mean, I know. bet you that those workers, like the day after, they didn't even know how to bid for their next gig. It's been thirty seven <laughs> years. You know, so what you... uh, what did you do last? Well, I built this fucking stairs that goes absolutely nowhere. You did what now? You know, <laughs> but I got paid so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But but that's a theory, right? So so one of the theories as to why the Winchester house turned out the way it did is that Sarah Winchester, Winchester built her labyrinthian home to combat ghosts. That's theory one. Okay. Another theory states that Sarah Winchester really built her home as an homage to an artistic style of her famous contemporary, artist Moritz Cornelius Escher, or M.C. Escher. Now, <laughs> listeners, MC. please, I know, right? listeners, please check the show notes for a few examples of Escher's crazy, mind-bending artistic style. When you look at Escher's work, it's incredibly difficult to tell up from down, left from right, inside from out and forward from backward and in his drawings escher truly bends the fabric of what we know as reality you could say that escher's work focuses on the essential properties inherent in a fourth spatial dimension and a world governed by four spatial dimensions was a very prominent and popular line of thought during sarah winchester's time yeah i'm looking at it now i've seen him before oh yeah you guys listeners oscar if you look him you'll know exactly who escher is once you see these pictures Definitely, definitely. Now, many scholars have noted that the Winchester Mansion features uncanny resemblances in its build features to Escher's body of work. And by all reports, and I mean all reports, walking through the Winchester house really can cause people extreme unease, dizziness, paranoia, and the overall feeling that reality changes while you're inside the mansion. Just like the report some people claim while studying Escher's art, it's pretty crazy. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, Lewis Carroll, another one of Sarah's contemporaries, played with this idea of the fourth dimension heavily in his books, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And one could easily imagine that stepping into the Winchester house is a lot like Alice stepping through the looking glass. So in this case, The Winchester Mansion wasn't built to confuse and trap ghosts. It was instead a very wealthy woman's homage to a popular reality-bending artist and the Fourth Dimension school of thought, which was popular at the time. Pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so that's theory two. Here's where it gets crazy. Then there's the Rosicrucian-Freemason-Francis Bacon connection, as in... Even before she and William Winchester got married, Sarah Lockwood Pardee was actually a Rosicrucian and a Freemason with incredibly heavy Baconian beliefs. And Sarah used very detailed architectural, mathematical, and numerological ideas from these three, let's call them ancient mystery schools of thought, to build the Winchester Mystery House. In fact, Sir Winchester believed, as did Francis Bacon, that the universe was a vast living organism in which all things are likened to individual evolving units or cells that comprise a greater universal, synergistic body that is ever building. And we know that the idea of an organism ever building was at the core of Sarah's methodology when it came to her Winchester house. <sighs> okay. Let's take a closer look at what I just said there because there's a lot to unpack. Now, back in New Haven, Connecticut, 
when Sarah Pardee was growing up, her family was a well-to-do, respected family in New Haven cir- social circles, even though by most accounts they were considered upper, upper middle class and not elite. Sarah's father, Leonard Pardee, was a rock-solid businessman who made his money manufacturing carriages and then supplying ambulances to the Union Army during the Civil War. Through the success of Leonard Pardee's business dealings and the Pardee family's acceptance by New Haven's elite, Sarah Pardee was given the opportunity to attend fine schools. And by all accounts, Sarah was extremely intelligent, like a prodigy. Mm. By the age of 12, she had already learned the Latin, French, Spanish, and Italian languages, And she developed an uncanny love for and understanding of classic literature, most notably Homer and Shakespeare. Now, I want to take a quick sidebar. This is important. There's a belief that William Shakespeare was not William Shakespeare, as in there never was a William Shakespeare. But instead, William Shakespeare was actually a nom de plume for the philosopher, essayist, and scientist Sir Francis Bacon, and Francis Bacon was actually the author that wrote the famous plays credited to Shakespeare. This is known as the Baconian theory of Shakespeare, which is actually thought to have been birthed right there in New Haven, Connecticut, while Sarah Pardee was growing up, which is so important because Sarah loved the Shakespeare body of work, and she absolutely worshipped the teachings of Sir Francis Bacon, which we'll get into at a very high level here in a bit. Okay. Back to the story. Time in. (laughs) Time in. Now, later, Sarah was admitted to Yale's only female scholastic institution called the Young Ladies Collegiate Institute. Since the Young Ladies Collegiate Institute was associated with Yale, and Yale, at the time at least, was heavily rooted in Masonic and Rosicrucian beliefs and teachings, Mm -hmm. Sarah found herself being indoctrinated with those same beliefs and philosophies as well. So what are these ancient mystery schools of thought, as I call them, that so heavily influenced Sarah Pardee and how she built the Winchester Mansion? Well, at the highest level, these three schools of thought, Masonic, Rosicrucian, and Baconian, love, I mean love, symbols, puzzles, codes, and numbers. They speak my language, bro. They're speaking my language. (laughs) I should convert. Talk my language, G. Yeah. Now let's take Rosicrucianism. Rosicrucian teachings are a combination of occultism and other religious beliefs and practices, including Hermeticism, Jewish mysticism, and Christian Gnosticism. The central feature of Rosicrucianism is the belief that the members possess secret wisdom that was handed down to them from ancient times, a higher power, so to speak. Rosicrucians were a philosophical society that existed to advance and inspire arts and sciences, including mathematics, and to discover the mysteries hidden in nature, which was a perfect springboard into Sarah Pardee's love for Baconian beliefs, specifically on mathematics. Now, Francis Bacon believed that mathematics was a primary metaphysical science dealing with the subject that, quote, appeareth to be one of the essential forms of things, as that that is causative in nature of a number of effects, end quote. Bacon believed that mathematics were the most abstracted of knowledges and a means by which we, man, might discover the higher laws or spiritual forms in the universe. It's pretty heavy stuff. And Bacon loved ciphers, codes, and he actually developed a a cipher called Bacon Cipher, a complex system to encode his teachings and hide them from everyone except those who are enlightened. The Bacon cipher uses a bilateral substitution alphabet, which replaces a character with a group of five formed with two letters, generally A and B. For example, in the Bacon cipher, the letter D was replaced by A-A-A-B-B. And the letter O was replaced by A, B, B, A, B, and so on. Now, listen, I don't know about you, but I suck at this cipher stuff. So what I did is I left a link to a Bacon cipher encoder in the show notes so you could play with this form of secret code and maybe even understand a little bit better than I explained it. Yeah, I'm reading it now. Yeah, I, I played with it. It was pretty fun. Now, Remember, the system of beliefs we're talking about are considered by practitioners like Bacon to be ancient 
and secretive, and only those with proper schooling should be able to know and understand them. And indeed, the Winchester Mystery House is absolutely loaded with secret Baconian codes and symbols. So in this scenario, we should replace the word mystery in Winchester Mystery House with the word puzzle. So it's really the Winchester Puzzle House, as in Sarah Pardee Winchester built the ultimate puzzle that only those who understand Rosicrucianism, Baconian codes, and Masonic symbols and teachings can solve. This is why you could find the constant reference to the number 13 throughout the Winchester Puzzle House. And when Sarah died, strangely, it was discovered that her will was also divided into 13 parts, and she signed it 13 times. Oh, wow. This is, this is why you'll find what's called the switchback staircase inside the mansion, a staircase built so as to wind from the center outward, round and round, in the shape of an Archimedes spiral until it reaches the mansion's second floor. The staircase has 44 tiny steps, each step just under two inches in height, so it feels more like you're walking up a ramp than walking up a flight of stairs. Additionally, the staircase has seven turns, seven turns, mind you, to get just to the second floor of a house, which is a direct reference to the winding staircase and the Jacob's Ladder used in second-degree Masonic symbology, a ramp that, that winds around seven turns ascending up into heaven. The seven turns in the switchback staircase also represent a progressively higher level of masonry as well as the seven liberal arts explained to a second-degree Mason initiate. Another glaring reference to Freemasonry is the fact that Sarah Winchester never let people enter her mansion through the front door, instead making her guests enter through the back door, through an entrance strategically built near the mansion's northwest corner. This is a direct reference to the fact that all Masonic initiates must enter their Masonic lodge through its northwest corner. So it seems that in this third long-winded explanation as to why the Winchester house turned out the way it did, Sarah looked at people entering her puzzle mansion as initiates, and only those who were educated properly could solve the mansion's puzzles. Most people she knew would only shrug and say something like, eh, that's weird, and then walk away when observing her architectural oddities. But for those very few people who were in the know, when they stepped into what's known as the Grand Ballroom, which is believed to be the very first piece in Sarah's overall puzzle, when they step into that Grand Ballroom and lay their eyes upon two beautiful yet peculiar stained glass windows on which are etched some cryptic sayings from Francis Bacon along with some strange symbols, she knew those people would understand what the Winchester House really was and that those stained glass windows would set in motion the enlightened visitor and send them off on a path of discovery throughout the mansion, picking up on secrets and clues and puzzles along the way, all of which helped to explain the very secretive ideas on which the Winchester Puzzle House was built. And there you have it. Three possible reasons why the Winchester Mansion was built. To trap ghosts, to honor a wildly popular artist in the fourth dimension school of thought, or to initiate the right visitor into Rosicrucian, Masonic, and Baconium systems of belief. Or all the above are incorrect, and Sarah Winchester really was just a crazy witch, rich white lady and had nothing better to do. But I really doubt that. Yeah, right, right. All right, so let's get back into it. Five months after Sarah Winchester's death, a family of carnival workers, headed by John and Mamie Brown, rented the odd mansion and began giving its first public tours. So the first public tours of what is now called the Winchester Mystery House began in 1923. Wow. And in, yeah, it's been going on forever, dude. And in 1924, famed magician and escape artist Harry Houdini visited the mansion. Hmm. And, and when he left, he famously referred to it as the Mystery House. And it's believed that's where the mansion's permanent name came from, the Winchester Mystery House. Or you could cool. just call them a magician's wet dream. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, at the time, Harry Houdini, which, by the way, we should do an episode on Houdini. We should. I'm surprised that would we be fucking, that would be to... Yeah, that would be rad. Yeah. So at the time, Harry Houdini was already incredibly just popular beyond, beyond his wildest dreams, right? Yeah. He set off on a tour going across – I don't know if it was the world or America – trying to debunk – the spiritualists of the time. He hated them. He wanted to prove them all wrong, right? Yeah. But he felt it's something in this house. 
and and he left calling it calling it the mystery house and that's how the name came to be i thought it was kind of cool anyway soon after the browns purchased the mansion at an auction for one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars. god what i wouldn't do to have that place Whoa. for 135 <laughs> And apparently, descendants of the original Brown family still own the Winchester Mansion to this day, even though it was designated a national landmark in 1974, and thus should be owned publicly, or at least as a not-profit. Winchester Investments, LLC, actually owns the property, and that's supposed to really be a secret. So much so that one article I read said that new employees who are hired to work at the Winchester Mansion, they supposedly sign a document that makes them swear they won't discuss the property's current ownership with the visitors or look it up. That's how big of a secret it's supposed to be. But wow. say la vie. Uh, and that's really where the mansion sits today, you know, giving tours to thousands of tourists and seekers of the paranormal a year. Their tours have expanded to include special Halloween flashlight tours, which I would love to do, by the way. Oh, my God. Self-guided tours, virtual tours. There's a shooting gallery, axe throwing, all sorts of stuff you could do. Really? Yeah. The Winchester, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any any rifle like practice? Well, range? the shooting gallery, yeah, the shooting. I gallery. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, television shows like Ghost Adventures have featured the Winchester Mystery House more than once, where conveniently strange things happen on camera, like this green vaporous hand that was captured by the Ghost Adventures crew at the mm. base of one of the mansion's stairways that lead to nowhere. And here we go, Oscar. There was even a 2018 feature film based off the legend of Sarah Winchester and her mansion and her ghosts, aptly titled Winchester, starring Helen Mirren as Sarah Winchester. Aptly titled. I would have called it Crazy House. Yeah. Um, Now, Winchester, the movie, currently enjoys a 13% uh, rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Way to go. Oh, yikers. And as I said, I saw it and it was god awful. So, yeah. So let's talk some ghosts. As Time Magazine once called the Winchester Mystery House, one of the most haunted houses in the world. There's the ghostly apparition of a man with jet black hair that's seen often, believed to be a past construction worker. This man has been seen mostly lingering about the fireplace in the grand ballroom, the room that I said really kicks off Sarah Marshall's, uh, Sarah Marshall, Sarah Winchester's. Yeah, no, you're uh, right the first time. It's Sarah Marshall. tour, right? Yeah, he's seen let's in just that, forget about her. Yeah, he's seen in that grand ballroom uh, hanging around the fireplace in there, almost like he's working on it or fixing it. And this same black-haired man has also been seen pushing a ghostly wheelbarrow down some of the mansion's long, dark hallways and corridors. Kind of so be careful. Be careful how you critique the decor when you're in those rooms because uh, – the, the the ghosts that built them are right there. Absolutely. Right? Imagine how like, embarrassing that would be. Oh, you know how long it took me, bitch? And slap, ghost slaps you in ghost the face. Slap. Now, several years ago, when an actual construction worker was on a ladder in a section of the mansion called the Hall of Fires, so named because of, because of its many closely placed fireplaces. <laughs> My God. That's so weird. While that worker was on a ladder, he felt a very strong hand pushing on his back when the worker turned around to see who might have been playing tricks on him of course there was no one there Mm -hmm. the worker quickly descended the ladder and started another project clear across the winchester grounds far away (laughs) from the hall of fires (laughs) apparently someone in the mansion didn't want the man working on the hall of fires that day yeah you think there are ghostly sights and sounds associated with the daisy room the room where Sarah Winchester was trapped during the Great Quake of 1906. Heavy sounds of sighs. <sighs> hmm. Yes, have been heard in the room, along with what appears to be a short black shadow near its doorway. And many people believe this is the ghost of Sarah Winchester herself, as she was only about four foot ten inches tall. Just a cute little thing. Yeah. Right. There's an odd-shaped room in the mansion's attic called the Witch's Cap. The Witch's Cap was once referred to as an important room to Sarah Winchester by world-renowned psychic medium James Van Pra. Winchester Mystery House staff members and guests often refuse to enter this room, claiming a high amount of spiritual energy that it's just too heavy, too thick for people to stand. 
and the witch's right. cap has this and, and again go to the show notes you can see this the witch's cap conical ceiling causes this very weird very specific acoustic effect it said that if you stand in the center of this room the witch's cap and you speak the sound surrounds you and it bounces back like an echo now, to this day, no one is really sure what Sarah Winchester used this room for. And maybe even more interesting, mm. this room was only discovered in 2017, bringing the mansion's total room count to 161 so far. Now, here's something interesting that I didn't write into the episode, but back when the Browns first took control of this property, mm-hmm. they tried to do a room count. And every time they would go through the mansion, they would come up with different numbers for the rooms. So, so they're saying that they wouldn't be able to keep track of what they're counting as they're That's exactly down. what I'm saying. That's insane. That's so they insane. just kind of decided, let's call it 160 and call it a day. Wow. Honest to God. Estimate. So no one's really sure how many rooms, just like the witch's cap, they just found it a few years ago. 161 rooms now, you know, who knows what else is in this place. That is crazy. I mean, you think about all the things that people can hide and people play with, especially in horror movies or whatever, with crawl spaces. Yeah. Right. You think of just crawl spaces, like what, how, what, what would the crawl (laughs) spaces of this place look like? Oh, dude, I don't know. You know what I should have looked up and I didn't remember how I said in the very beginning, this place has two basements. I would love mm. to see if there's pictures of these basements out there and what stories go along with those basements. I wonder what's the, uh, how, I, I wonder what these tours look like. Do you know how they work? So from what I understand, most of them are self-paced. Uh, you listen to something, you know, put a pair of headphones on like you have right now. Uh, oftentimes you'll hold a, a smart device and you'll uh-huh. go, you download an app, you'll go uh, location to location, and you'll stand and listen to what the app has to say about that location. That's the way I understand it. Now, I've never been here. Um, that's pretty nifty, actually. That's kind of how their website makes it sound. And then add the flashlight at night to that same type of tour, and then you have your Halloween flashlight tour. That's a pretty nifty way to do a tour, though. You know, yeah. you don't need a person. Save, that... Saves on docents, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, not that they're, you know, it's not a great profession to get into right now. Um, not right now, no. No, no. Or lately, maybe. Yeah, maybe they're gone. They're gone. It's like one of those professors has gone away now. Um, but uh, no, I'm thinking because uh, if <laughs> if they're still discovering rooms, so to speak. Yeah. Like, not so to tour, speak, dude. How, wait, so for real, uh, how do you organize uh, a tour guide, a tour? For a, a house that is built to uh, confuse you. Yeah. So that's a great question. Um, from my research, what I understand is that not all portions of the house are open to tours. You can only go to very specific locations. I would assume easy to find you location should you get lost uh, for the people who work there to find you. you. You don't go just balls to the wall throughout the house. There's There's areas that are blocked off. Some of these special tours, though, that they give do open up additional rooms depending if if you pay for it. Um, the witch's cap being the most recent. So they're like, so they, they're they like limit, levels? Yeah, hmm. le- levels, areas of the home. Um, you can only go certain places. Because huh. people have gotten lost in this place. It's a real thing. Like, is, it, is it weird that I want to get lost in there? No, because I'm dying to go here. I want to go here so badly. I, I just got to bring like a couple sandwiches, a couple of water <laughs> Some bottles. sandwiches. You know, I'll be fine. Right? Yeah, I can, man. Like, it can't take me more than a day to get out, right? <laughs> so I'm wondering if any of our listeners have ever been here. Let us know. You know the address. You know the phone number. Let us let right. us know if you've experienced this place and what it was like for you. We'll get you on the show. I'm not really California savvy, but man, that sounds so interesting to like visit. I want to. I just want to see. Yeah. I just want to see it. I just really want to see and touch it and feel it and stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, even if there's no ghosts, like, I want to get on with my ghost stories here. But even if there's no ghosts, I still want to. I gotta. I gotta. I want to try to follow the codes, see if I could find some references to Bacon's mm-hmm. codes and mm-hmm. Rosicrucianism, Masonic uh, imagery. So cool. So cool. Now there's Sarah Winchester's main bedroom where she passed away in her sleep in 1922. Remember? Yes. She, Sarah relocated to this bedroom after getting trapped inside the Daisy bedroom, like I said, during the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Stories say that Sarah had to be physically extracted from the Daisy Room uh, 
as rubble from the earthquake had, had trapped her inside. Now, one story says that Winch- Sarah Winchester felt that the 1906 quake was a warning from the spirits that she had spent too much money on the front section of the house, which was damaged during the quake. Now, uh, that's she saw it as a sign, and the people who right, right, okay, I see you. I see where you're going now. Now, I do want to mention some quick facts here about the earthquake because we've mentioned it a few times already. The Great San Francisco earthquake happened at 5:12 a.m. on Wednesday, April 18th, 1906. The earthquake came in measuring a whopping 7.9 on the Richter scale, and approximately 3,000 people died, and 80% of San Francisco was destroyed as a result of this quake. Wow. The more you know. Today, people claim to hear ghostly footsteps in the main bedroom, as well as experience roaming cold spots. And again, some claim this is possibly the ghost of Sarah Winchester haunting the room in which she died. Now, there's a strange room that many consider to be the heart of the mansion. It's called the seance room. I thought you said the kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) Which one? (laughs) It's called the seance room. And architecturally, Mm -hmm. the seance room is purposely built dead center in the mansion. Now, the seance room was once a very private and off-limits room to everyone but Sarah Winchester herself. Legends say that it's in this room where Sarah retreated to to commune with the spirits and to gain understanding from the spirits as to what was to be built in the mansion the following day. Mm. Nearby residents claimed to hear the, the mansion's bell tower, which was located outside of the seance room, toll every night at midnight and again at 2 a.m. at midnight to summon the spirits and again at 2 a.m. to tell the spirits to depart. Mm. Now, interestingly, there is one entrance to this room and three exits. One exit is through the entrance door, naturally. Another exit, it's a door, an exit that leads to an eight-foot drop directly into the kitchen sink on the floor below. No. Honest to God, I have pictures of it. Look to check the show notes. And the final exit is a one-way door that resembles a secret passage, which leads to a closet in an adjacent room. And for some reason, there are bars on the window in this room. To keep something in, to keep something out, we're not sure. It's like, uh, yeah, that sounds like one of those, um, like leading things. Like the, the, it almost feels like it's built there uh, to purposely lock in whatever comes out of a seance. You know what I'm saying? To trick it, to confuse it, to yeah, to do like something. You know, uh, uh, kind of reminds me of that whole thing with the goat. You know, when you bring a goat to a seance or something like that. You, you I'm not saying it's this is real, but I've seen it in in, in lore or read it about it. How. They, they would trick the, the spirit or the demon or whatever to go into the goat, and then they slaughter the goat to oh, eradicate yes. it. You're right. They could, put, they could lead the goat to there, right, or something like that. Like, um, Yeah, like that, you know, just to, just to lock it somewhere and keep it away. Like, I, so it didn't harm the, the people. Like a bait thing, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the spirit didn't hurt the people. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of that built into the house, if that's what you believe. You can definitely see it. Mm-hmm. You know, stairways that lead to nowhere. Uh, a, a door that literally opens to a st- two-story drop to the concrete below outside. You open the door, you don't watch, you're done. Stuff like that. It's, and it's supposedly to confuse the ghosts, if that's what you believe, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, there are stories that Sarah Winchester has been seen wandering the mansion's gardens in her short, ghostly, black shadow form, just like the ghost caught in the daisy room. Now, believe me, I could go on and on about the strange rooms and ghostly activity in the Winchester mansion. But I guess I'll close with a quote by actress Helen Mirren, the one who played Sarah Winchester in that god-awful movie. (laughs) (laughs) God-awful. Mirren said, quote, If the Winchester mansion is haunted, I feel it's haunted by something very benign. I feel sort of a great sweetness in the house, not a horror. There is a sweetness in it. It is haunted by something sweet, if it's haunted, end quote. So listeners, there you have it, the Winchester Mystery House. Please remember, check out the show notes so you can see some of the things we're talking about. Oscar, what did you think of this story? It's it's very good. I also love how it's a story that you can uh you can really experience yourself. You know, not good everything point. we talk about we can really touch and, and feel. It's like the Grand Canyon, right? You know, what I'm saying you can actually visit this place and, and stuff and check it out. 
Great point. Because yeah. a lot of our stories tend to be like more like the the Alaskan wildlife. Like you need like a helicopter to get there. <laughs> um, you know, you know, you know, it's impossible. Or they're tied to some time ago, or right, or, or some serial killer that's long dead now. Things like that. Well, not that you want to meet a serial killer anyway, but. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is good. This is one of those good ones that you can just go visit. Um, and, and it's in, the, in this country too. So that works. Yeah. Um, yeah. It makes me really want to go. We should do that, Oscar. When, uh, when this COVID stuff clears up and we get to someone the- out there has a running tally of how many times we've said, Oh man, we got to go there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and what those places are, because right now I can't think of any, all I have is Winchester on the mind, but I wonder what those other ones are too. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so there you have it. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, which theory do you believe? Do you believe she built it to to entice and trap ghosts? Do you believe she built it to honor her contemporary Escher and his works of art in that fourth dimension uh, school of thought? Or do you think this goes even deeper and more ritualistic into Rosicrucianism, uh, Baconian, Baconian beliefs, and, and Freemasonry? Oh, sorry. In, in a way, you can almost you could give a good you could give a good argument to all three. Mm. You know, you could give a, an argument for all three. It's harder to make that argument for all three, but uh, I'm leaning towards the uh, the the last one you said, the latter, where like she built it in this like a, this devotion thing to her beliefs to her beliefs. Yeah. I kind of, but so I, I would say, yes, I agree with you, but that Escher stuff. Yeah. That Escher stuff also very compelling reason. Yes. Compelling theory. That one uh, drawing of that's my reason. That's why I would do something like this. Yeah. Yes, I would. I would in a heartbeat. (laughs) I've often thought of like where I would keep hidden anything and like make things like not fun house, but like, close to a fun house feeling awesome. uh, I, I would totally do that uh, again never had the capital to do it but this lady sure did and uh, yeah, she did. And, I, and you kind of respect that now if it, if it's um if it's her belief system that be, you know she was being chased uh for, for from all these phantoms and ghouls and whatnot then um you know then her life probably was a lot harder than we are probably supposing but uh, if not though these other reasons are really cool reasons to do it yeah, agreed. You know, like I, I would, I would hate that. I would hate that. Uh, that ghosts were really chasing her. But we know what I would hate more though is that if she was like schizophrenic or dementia or something crazy, where she was having a real hard time in a time where that kind of stuff wasn't diagnosable. Oh. So like she was like reacting this way because she had the money to do it, and when she should have been spending money to help her mental health, maybe. Very interesting. That's right. very interesting. You know what I'm now, saying? Like, I, I love the thought. I could tell you there are zero indications that she suffered anything other than maybe depression. Uh, I mean, it seems of like the, that seems like for sure on that one. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was constantly dressed in black, black from mourning. Matter mm-hmm. of fact, if you go to the show notes, I have in the show notes the only known picture of Sarah party winchester so go check that out but i would say that's the only thing she might have suffered from was with some depression because of the loss of her husband and child understandable she was a lonely mm-hmm. widow other than that she completely had her faculties she was incredibly intelligent i think she was too smart to be duped by a, a spiritualist i think she did this with absolute purpose and intention and uh, it's something for future generations to pick up and run with yeah 100 percent i experience almost- I mean, I almost want to have a whole discussion about this uh, uh, this idea what you're talking about because, uh, you know, the smarter you are, the easier you are to fool. The more you think you're smart, it's like one of those things. Like, the I think least, there's truth to that. There's a little truth to that. I'm not saying that she was duped at all. I'm just saying that uh, her depression and uh, falling into solitary confinement, I guess, uh, mm-hmm. solitary lifestyle. She was uh, very reclusive. That I mean, is true. we are. We are. Despite what we want to be, we are animals that require community and whatnot. I think uh, you can you, you can surmise that a a reaction psychologically could result in someone like thinking that something like this is happening to her and then reacting this way to do it. Even if she did it really intelligently, it still could not be the truth, or it could be a result mm-hmm. of her depression. Um, I'm not. I'm again I'm not saying she's duped. It's just funny. Uh, 
uh, it's also the times, also a lot of things. There's a lot of weird things that are very unique to her that uh, it's hard to empathize with, um, you know, in general, yeah. uh, her situation and so on. Uh, yeah, it's super interesting. Um, it's the kind of person that you would have loved to meet, right, in real life at some point. Yeah. Oh, to definitely. See what she was like to see what she'd say about this kind of stuff. Um, I would love, yeah, I'd love to pick a brain. Yeah, but I hope this house lasts forever, man, on there. Oh, I think that sucker is built very well. I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. Good. And plus all the money that pours in from tourism will keep that place going strong. I yeah. would hope so. Well, good. I'm glad you enjoy it. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed the episode as well. I want to wish everyone a very happy, safe Halloween. Go out and get yeah. you some candy, but do it safely. And go Oscar, watch some horror movies. Go watch some horror movies, absolutely. And leave us some reviews. How about that? Yeah, do that. <laughs> do that. Yeah. Oscar, take us home. Let's do it. Sure. Here's the here's the problem with uh, going to New Orleans. New Orleans is oh. that uh, all the people that um, that uh, you know because you're prepared and you're worried and all that that you couldn't see are going to start saying like, okay, you can hang out now, right? Because you went to New Orleans. I know. I thought about that. That's the first thought when you first said, it. "I'm like, oh shit, I can see Jay in like a month now." <laughs> Um, about that. Well, when I get back, I should def- we should definitely quarantine, I think, just to be de- safe. And de louse. Yeah, pretty much. Like in the prison movies? I know. I thought about that, too. T- Katie's not even telling her parents we're going because they'll give her shit because she hasn't been to see them. Are, you, are they going to shit somewhere and send it to her? Probably. Wow. If they found out and taken her to New Orleans, yeah. That's hardcore. But I figure, you know, we're adults. We know how to stay away from people. It's not, we have connections there we've been talking to and it's not, not very busy. So we're not crowded bar type people anyway. So I think we could pull it off and be safe. Well, not too long ago you were, but uh, I guess not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore. I, I could do without crowded bars. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we're, we're going on the 13th and we'll be back on the oh, 18th. You hear this girl? Hi, Lexi. What did she say? That's some wet ass pussy. Some wet ass pussy indeed. <laughs> it's a song that she keeps like reciting all good. day. It's a good wholesome song. It's wholesome. It's from Disney, I think. Very good. For- <laughs> it's from Mulan. I Is that what the new princess sings about? Um, go to YouTube, search WAP by I've, Cardi B. For some, oh, it's Cardi B. Is that who it is? Of course. I've heard this. I've heard of WAP. I didn't know it was Cardi B, though. What's another one? Uh, uh, you know, like MySpace had their own version of things that a lot of others looked similar. Yeah. Uh, I played with Squarespace once or twice. Not enough to be an expert on that one particularly, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty easy to put it away. Yeah. So, yeah, things like that, you know. Yeah. I'll get it to you. Because um, I always update mine. I'm not good at it because I keep cool. it. Is your current one <laughs> yeah. uh, um, WordPress? No, it's Weebly. Weebly. Okay. I've heard and of Weebly. That wasn't my choice. It was, uh, like I said, I got someone to start it for me because uh, starting it from scratch, I don't ever know how to begin that kind of thing. At least, or I didn't want the headache maybe. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, I had a friend and he helped me out and hmm. did it did it for me i gave him like some money and that's it he just started it for me cool and and uh, i gave him credit his name is on the page on the main page at the bottom things like that um but yeah 
you know, and then from that, I just took it from there. Cool. Yeah, I'll but have I'm, to. I'm about to do a whole revamping of the website, though. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I want to change almost everything about it. I'm making it a little more sleeker, a little more uh, subtle in its approach. Because hmm. I, I, I had it made like a... I had it made almost as a joke, um, but only if people who understood us, meaning the show, would understand maybe uh, why I built the website the way I did. It's meant, it's set up like an older website where like it's making fun of the fact that this is like the 50,000th movie we- movie podcast and that um, <laughs> it all started from the blogosphere of the early 2000s. So is um, that the, the black and green idea? Yeah, that's exactly where it came from. Okay. And I stuck, right. by, it for, I stuck by it for this long. But I'm gonna I'm gonna change all that up now. Uh, I might keep the same background stuff, colors and stuff, color schemes, but not the not the font, not the picture stuff anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up. NYPD Blue. God, I haven't yeah. thought of that show in ages. Yeah, it's been it's been a minute for me. My stepdad used to watch it all the time. I hated it because he watched it. Because you hated your stepdad. But at the time, I did. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, know you're, you're rebellious. I get it. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that and Mash, Mash. Oh, I hated fucking Mash. hated Mash because he loved it. You know. Oh yeah, I mean that is a that's a Gen, that's a baby boomer show, right? I guess. Or is that or is that even older than that? I, I don't know. I would say baby boomer, maybe. Because I mean, we didn't start naming generations until basically baby boomers, I guess. Maybe. Well, the one before that was the Greatest Generation. I don't know what came before that. Okay. You're right. Yeah, might be them that I'm thinking of. But you know, that show lasted longer than the goddamn war. Did it really? I mean, it's about the Korean War. A lot of people think it's Vietnam, but it's the Korean War. Is it really? Uh Uh-huh. And that show lasted like eight seasons. The fucking war wasn't eight years. Wow. You know, you're right. This whole time I did think it was Vietnam. Mm Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm. Have you ever seen the movie? No. The movie is really good. I mean, the show is based on the movie. Uh, obviously, different actors and stuff. Because there's Donald Sutherland in the movie. He's not going to do a fucking show. Oh. But, um, yeah, the movie is really funny. It's really good. Made by Robert Altman. Big guy. Big, wow. Big movie director. Yeah. Huh. There was something I was going to tell you. Uh, another sitcom. There's t serial television show. Fuck. Anyway, that's fine. <laughs> you lost it, huh? Go I did. On. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I mean, you have that kind of time and you uh, you devote yourself to this kind of like grand puzzle. It's, it's totally possible. You can do it. Yeah. yeah you can really right. do it. It's like it's a video game. It, it really it's one of those mythical things that you no way someone's going to do. But they do. <laughs> it's just a lady fucking did it. And, she you know, did. and you also uh, see this a lot in, in a lot of stuff. That people don't really think about, you know, for example, like uh, when you go into the like, let me think of an example. I I had a good one earlier when you were talking about I didn't want to interrupt. It was um, it reminded me of one of these old Etruscan like, that's not the right word. Um, These old buildings, these old churches, like in Italy. No, you're exactly right. You know what I'm talking about. So there was a period in her life. Uh. Before, no, no, while she, her husband, no, before she got married, it was like between college graduation and before she got married, she just whisked away to Europe and records say she was um, extradited to Europe, expedited to Europe, something like that. Mm -hmm. She had already been so learned in the ways of Rosicrucianism and Freemasonry that scholars believe she spent time with a Freemason lodge over in Europe studying these churches that you're talking about the churches that the da vinci code talks about these yeah right you know yeah like those yeah like those and that's exactly. what she modeled her house after as well these mysterious because it's all architecture and math and science put into these places that that right. was in like the da vinci code and things that she brought that back and incorporated that into her house as well it's so funny you said that yeah it reminds me of one of those and that's like and i think it should i think it's supposed to yeah, right. And it's like old. That's old history, and that's been done for a long time. And and there's been, I'm sure, there's 
hundreds of examples. So you think of the pyramids, right? You think of oh yeah, all the hidden stuff and the people we're still discovering shit. Jesus Christ, you know. Dude, like, I think within the last month they had two discoveries over in, in Egypt of Are you kidding? No, no, no. Wow. Of these these big graves with a bunch of sarcophagus and shit. Because you're right, we're still discovering. Right. Yeah. I mean, think of the intricacy and the, they're keeping their history alive, even though their civilization is long ended for thousands of years now. Amazing. And uh, it's really, and, and there's this stuff and, you, and there's other cultures and civilization islands that we'll never know about in our lifetimes. until yeah. Someone gets there and puts a camera on it. Um, <laughs> you want to laugh. It's funny you mentioned that too. What? Um, one of the, before I wanted to do the, fi- remember I started with the finders. That was going to be tonight's topic, the finders, the cult. Well, yeah, you said, mentioned some cult. I didn't know. Yeah, well, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. That too, the 400 pages. I just didn't have time. I, I will do it. But yeah. after the finders, I started researching underwater archaeology and underwater like cities and things. So yeah. I was going to go with a theme of three or four mysterious underwater finds, um, these lost cities. Because you mentioned lost cities and things. And yeah. Is that, that what they – yeah. That was going to be another one of my topics. So it's funny you said that too. Yeah. Is that that thing you showed me that one time? Uh, maybe it was on the show. Maybe not. About uh, how, was it Google Maps or something that oh. found? You know what I'm talking about, right? We did that in the 33rd Parallel episode. That's right. Yes. That's yes. Because right. uh, I also enjoy it too. So, yeah. uh, But I, I want to grow this. I mean, I mean in, in, in many ways, not to, not to put pressure on anything. I, I hang my head on a lot of, on a lot of the show. To, uh, to to get um, I don't know my not creative juices necessarily, but to know that I'm working on something, you know. Yeah, I like I like it. Well, good, you good. Um, I'm not saying I, it's keeping me from a bullet to my head. Or anything <laughs> like that. I'm not saying that. No, no, not not that dramatic. No, but I know what you mean. I do. I, yeah. I still hold out that one day we could do this forever full time. You know, yeah. I still, I still have that hope. 